Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the other side of weight loss. So my guest today is Wade T. Lightheart. Um, I'd like to know what the T stands for, by the way, Wade. Uh, host of the Awesome Health Podcast, is a three-time all-natural national bodybuilding champion, advisor to the American Anti-Cancer Institute, and co-founder of education at BioOptimers nutrition, one of the world's most innovative nutritional supplement companies. He is also the author of several books, including the best-selling books, Staying Alive in a Toxic World, and the Healthy Wealth, sorry, The Wealthy Backpacker. The Awesome Health Podcast is a big part of his mission to help others fix their digestion and transform their life with the daily practice of positive principles, rituals, and optimizers. So welcome, Wade. What's the tea? Great question. I've kept that a mystery for me. Don't. Years. Yeah. So you, I always like to say it stands for ta-da. Oh, <laughs> I'm not calling you way ta-da lightheart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll keep the mystery buried. All right, let's gotta do it. Little, gotta have a few things in the digital age. To, 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 but yeah. clearly it's a middle name, I'm guessing, right? Sure and you're well. just like, you must like it enough that you're putting the T into the name. Mm. But we'll never know, will we? We'll never know. Ah. All right. Well, Wade, I'm going to let some other stuff out of the bag then. All right. Let's okay. Do it. So I want to know how you went from being almost a monk in India yep. to a male stripper, which was yep. a successful career by the sounds of it, yep. uh, to being a bouncer, to being a bodybuilder, to what it is that you do today. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> kind of a strange journey, I guess. And I love it. Yeah. Um, I think it's really simple. I mean, basically I got into, you know, I'll, I'll just backtrack to how everything got started just yeah. for people to, to get a background before we get into the good stuff, which is how do we help people, you know, figure out this whole weight loss thing, especially as age. Yeah. Um, when I was 15, three dramatic things happened to me. One, my parent, I lived in rural New Brunswick, Canada, which is, and, and we moved from a small village to a no village. And what I mean by that, it was five miles to my nearest neighbor the telephone poles ended at our driveway. It was a dirt road. I had to take a bus or I had to take a four wheel drive or a snowmobile out to the road to catch the bus kind of thing. Like, so we're talking the deep woods. It was a beautiful location. Um, yeah. My dad was a caretaker for uh, wealthy individuals at private resort. So it was a beautiful place, but not a place I wanted to be when I was 15. Uh, uh, on top of that, my sister was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease, which is a form of cancer of the lymph nodes. And so we went through the medical model. Uh, you know, we didn't know anything about all that sort of stuff for four years. So I watched her go through that whole painful chemo, radiation, bone marrow transmit, catheters, mm. massive amounts of painkillers and drugs and steroids and all that sort of stuff before she died at the age of 22. That had a big impact on me at that time. And then the third thing was when she just got diagnosed, she had given my sister, that is, she, she was four years my senior. She gave me a bodybuilding magazine. So at that time, uh, and on the cover of that, I remember was Troy Zuclato, who was Mr. California. He was this blonde haired guy with these muscles with two pretty girls on there. And, you know, like being a 15 year old boy, right? You're kind of you're like, I'm going to be that. That's me. Yeah, yeah. This, <laughs> is this how I get girls? And I've got yeah. a lot of time on my hands. There's no cell phones. There's no, there's no, there's none of the technology. There's no internet. There's none of that stuff. So, so I went out and I built myself a, a, a gym in the barn, a love Rocky style, if you will. And I started reading Arnold Schwarzenegger books. And he said, if, if you have hard work and you have self-discipline and a positive attitude, you can do anything. And so he became my new mentor, my whatever he said I did. And I, I trained like a fiend in that gym. And later on, I went to university, built myself up pretty good. I, I thought the other thought junk was that was I think that the, the trauma of my sister's illness made me recognize a couple things. That number one, health isn't a guarantee. Life isn't a guarantee. And I was determined that I was not going to uh, operate with a life of regrets, that I was just going to take chances. And that's led to a lot of the things that you alluded to, yeah, <laughs> which is a, a wide variety of experiences and yes. lifestyles and stuff like that. And uh, I don't regret any of it. I think it was I great. And, uh, you know, I, I hope if when I go into, into the grave that it's a, it's a barrel roll and I'm just spent. So all that to say, um, 
I went to university, studied exercise physiology at the University of New Brunswick. Uh, I was kind of recognized with a kind of decent physique at that time. And uh, that's where the, the stripping career started a little bit. Uh, that's how I kind of earned my way. I became known as a little bit of, of uh, this kind of out there kind of guy, I guess. And so I was, a lot of the girls' residents would, would hire me for birthday parties and events and stuff like that, including the <laughs> dean of the girls' residence. So I started to learn about some of the, some of the interesting nuances of, the, of, of female group dynamics that uh, most men are kind of ignorant to. So that's kind of a little funny thing in my hat. Yeah. And uh, my bodybuilding career took off as my exercise physiology and I kept training. And, and then after I left school, which I thought was incomplete, I started to mentor under people who produce uh, extraordinary results. That led me to Scott Abel, who was my bodybuilding coach. He was the premier bodybuilding coach in uh, probably in the world, certainly at that time for sure. And uh, that really advanced my training knowledge and my understanding of diet. Long story short, after 16 years in the game, I wow. won my national championships and I went to the world championships as a vegetarian. It was a very difficult challenge. I discovered meditation a few years uh, before that. I became a vegetarian concordantly, but I didn't know how to do it really right. And we were going through all these processes and trying to do it like a meeting mentality. And after the Mr. Universe, I gained 42 pounds of fat and water in 11 weeks. Wow. And um, prior to that, about the ashram, so I'm trying to cover all your points, I had stayed <laughs> in the ashram uh, early before the Mr. Universe contest. Uh, at the start of the year, I was friends with a guy and was part of an Indian wedding and, and went to an ashram. And uh, I had decided that after I competed at the Mr. Universe, I was going to be a monk. And, uh, and I had made friends with them and had a spiritual discipline. And uh, I still spent a lot of time in that kind of genre if you will mm -hmm. and after mr universe he said you know the monks told me that i really wasn't cut out to be a monk and that i need to go back and i'd given up everything at this point like i surrounded everything Ready. my contest was in india the mr universe was in india oh wow okay i was gonna go off to the ashram in the himalayas and then uh, that all got changed i mean i'd spent some time in one before yeah and uh i liked the vibe and i liked the practice and i liked it but then i was kind of well, was refused. it where you were supposed to be? I was refused. They told me, no, no, yeah. no. Yeah, they maybe, knew. They're like, mm -mm. maybe it was the strip. You got to go back. Bodybuilding. Maybe it was my karma or my dharma You're or my karma. Like, oh, I don't know. I don't we know. We don't want your kind around here. No, no. So I came back, and um, what was interesting, conversely, is I gained 42 pounds of fat and water in 11 weeks after that contest. So there's a lot of things yeah. that happened at that yeah. time. Yeah, which is quite common for people that do bodybuilding contests. And which relates to kind of your audience today mm -hmm. because. It's not all about diet. It's not all about calories. It's not all about that. There's a, there's a unique hormonal process. And because I had engaged in such a restrictive process for such a long period of time, my success actually set me up for failure. And thank God I met my mentor at that time, uh, Dr. Michael O'Brien, who uh, was a, this fantastically vibrant senior citizen um he had like clear skin and his eyes would look right through you and he was so vibrant and powerful and it was just like he's just one of these mind like you're going how does this actually work you know and i mentored them and i said michael i i don't know what's wrong here i've got the best coach in the world i've got a background in exercise physiology background in nutrition i've been at the top of my game for 16 years you know i've been single digit body fats level for a decade. How did I turn into Mr. Marsh? How did I go from Mr. Universe to Mr. Marshmallow? Like what happened? Oh wow, yeah. Right? So, I think this so hard on your psyche, hey, and on, on your ego, you just must have been devastated. Well, you know, it was the, the beautiful part of it was is I really could understand the uncomfortability that people who are overweight or who've struggled with weight loss feel. Like the, I, yeah. I felt what it like to not be able to fit in any of your clothes and having to wear sweatpants suddenly. Yeah. And you keep in mind, this is like 11 weeks, 42 pounds. Like this is like a, like, fast, yeah. and I know that I know there's a lot what's interesting is I'm a guy, but I think a lot of women have experienced this when they get changes in their hormones and stuff. Yes. Like, yeah. Michael said something to me really powerful. And he said, Wade, you've learned to build the body from the outside in. What you haven't learned is how to build the body from the inside out. And so what I went through uh, over the course of the next six months is I engaged in rebuilding my digestive system, which is the 
foundation of a lot of hormonal interactions. It's the foundation of our neurochemicals. And, and that's how it kind of trips off a lot of the hormonal reactions inside the body. I got out of the fight or flight mode that it kind of set me up from the, you know, because I was in, in, in that adrenal response long for so long. And this was a recoil. And uh, literally within six months, got my physique back, got my health back. In fact, I felt better than I ever had. I had the same conditioning. And people were saying, telling me how vibrant I was and how much energy I had. And I didn't have the joint pains. I didn't have the brain fog that I had leading up into that contest. Because I think a lot of people look at those people in magazines or on stages and they think, oh, that looks great. But you talk to them personally, they're going through hell to look like that. And then you see them three months, six months, 12 months later, and they've blown up, they've given up, and they don't know why. So, and, yeah, yeah, why, why, wait, like, is it the, the caloric restriction? I mean, were you taking steroids or stuff like yeah. that, that were putting stress on your system? Yeah, no steroids. Believe it or not, I was a vegetarian bodybuilding champion that competed at the world championships without drugs, which was kind wow. of rare. Yes, it is. Rare. Um, um, but the long-term restricted calorie eating was part of it. Um, eating a very nutrient deficient diet, but more importantly, I totally messed up my gut health. Oh. And the using, say, a lot of, at the time, a lot of whey protein, because yeah. it was a lacto oval vegetarian, so then we didn't know how to do it. There was no plant proteins. There was nothing. Like, we had nothing to go by. Um, and mostly, I would say, a, 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 ref, a refined carbohydrate diet, low fats. There was no probiotics. There was no enzymes. There was nothing that would support my gut health. There wasn't very much fiber. I'd have a little tiny salad every day. Like, I mean, I, I was on, like you know, training four hours a day on 1,550 calories a day. Yeah, but it right. is, it's interesting because you would still think that somebody that's eating as clean as you were, which yeah. anyone in that world, yeah, you, I mean, you're eating the boiled chicken breast with steamed broccoli for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like everything is so lean and you're not eating the sugar and the processed foods. No. And yet eating those foods destroyed your gut health. Yes, because yeah. essentially I wasn't feeding the good guys in my system. Right. The undigested protein, which I couldn't possibly assimilate from my diet, was feeding the bad guys. Those bad guys were putting toxins into my blood. That was making my joints hurt. That was waking, why I was waking up with the brain fog. That's why I was tired and lethargic all the time. And because the bacteria in our body and the enzymatic processes of digestion those control a lot of things, the neurochemicals in our brains. And if you're in a positive state or you're in a negative state, oftentimes has to do with neurochemistry. And for women in particular, it's even more pronounced because women are designed to have babies at a very young age. Yeah. And today's woman is much different, you know, and one of the great steps forward for women in particular, and I can comment on this because I've literally coached thousands of women, was you know, the development of birth control and the development of feminine hygiene products. Those two things I think has done more for women than any two products that are out there because it removed them from the excommunication stuff and it allowed them to control when they had children. Now, prior to this, if you look to that, people were having kids at 18, 19, 16, 17, 20, you know, before they hit 22, 23, 24. Right. And it yeah. was rare that you got to 30. Now, today, we've got all the advantages of choice and be able to develop careers and stuff. But then a lot of women are getting to that age, 20, late 20s, early 30s. They're, they're wanting to have a family that, you know, that's kicking in. But hormonally, they're much different. And it's much harder for them to rebound back like it is when you're 18, 19, 20. And you need to be addressing some of these issues. And nobody talks about this because no. you really never dealt with this before. And then yeah. on top of that, if they've been using birth control for a number of years prior to it, or if they, you know, the proliferation of antibiotic use, because there's, you know, all, we have a lot of things like, um, uh, you know, yeast infections and, you know, things like that. Then there's the whole herpes thing and all that sort of stuff and psychological connections because it's so prominent in the populations. All of these things um, oftentimes can be addressed going back to gut health, going back to a strong immune system going down to breaking down the foods that you're eating and so you can manufacture the polypeptide chains, put yourself in the right neurochemical state, get yourself in the right uh, nervous system state. And those things over the long term is what people need to focus on if 
calorie restriction and exercise isn't working. And that is a limited game that will always fail for every single person. And that's why they keep coming out with new diets. Because yeah. if diets really worked, then they wouldn't need to invent new ones. And I'm not saying don't throw the yeah. diets out, eat chocolate bars and you know, sit <laughs> on the couch all day. What I'm saying is, is that a diet is a very limited paradigm that fits within the hormonal cascade and the digestive health, which is related to your microbiome and the functioning of your body. Can you actually assimilate the foods and is your diet actually setting you up for a big failure? And I think the answer to that question is, is yes, most women who are on a diet and exercise routine will run into this trouble at some period of time. Yeah, I agree. And not to mention the birth control pill, as great as it was, it does create leaky gut. I mean, there's scientific yeah. proof that it destroys your gut. So it's like this, yeah, I hear you, we've, we've got all these advantages, <laughs> but we've also kicked ourselves in the, in the foot too, because it's like, now we're waiting till we're in our thirties to have kids. And we're not, that's when we're supposed to be settling down. That's when our hormonal system starts changing. And we're supposed to like not be as social, not do so much. And here we've got little kids, right? I've got a five-year-old and I'm 43 and it, you can feel it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Kudos to you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. But that's what how you, I started late. I wanted to get the career. I wanted to, I wasn't, I was too busy traveling the world and doing fun things like you were doing. I'm surprised we didn't meet up somewhere out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we're here today. Yeah. <laughs> so talk to me then about how enzymes specifically, like, cause you're really into digestive enzymes and what they can do for your health. So I'd love for you to just explain what are, what are digestive enzymes sure. and why is that so important right now? I mean, we, we, I get that it's like we, we have bad digestive systems, but how is that impacting our weight, our hormones? Well, I'm going to refer to a couple of books for people who want to dive deep into the science. Yeah. And uh, there's a great book by Dr. Edward Howe, who is kind of the godfather of the enzymatic uh, world, if you will. And um, a lot of his work was lost. It was discovered by another doctor, Dr. Uh, Victor Kovinskas, uh, in the Harvard Medical Library, kind of buried. And basically, Dr. Hell, back in the 30s and 40s, um, discovered the role of enzymes in digestion. And actually, it's corollary effect of enzymatic deficient diets. What that means is, is animals that were fed enzymatic deficient diets by the third generation Okay. developed a whole bunch of genetic diseases, strange sociological behaviors, and the inability to procreate. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this and why this is relevant. Now, enzymes, just enzymes. And, so there's only two things in the body that actually literally do work. Enzymes and probiotics. These are the workers. They clean the house. They break down the food. They truck the food to your things. They take the waste back. Everything from thinking to blinking requires an enzymatic process. And an enzyme is a catalyst. There's well over 25,000 enzymatic chemical reactions going on in your body on any given moment. And they are distinguished into three particular pathways. There's a lot of different ones, but from a digestive side, you have enzymes that break down protein, which are called protease enzymes. You have enzymes that break down carbohydrates, which are amylase. And you have enzymes that break down fats, which is lipase. Now, there's other things that we've probably heard of, like lactase, for example, that breaks down you know, the, the sugar in milk, okay? But, and then there's, you know, you can get into galactase, but those are the primary three. And there's other ones, and we don't need to go too in depth because I don't want to lose anybody here. I want people to grasp the principles. So. This is where we, we humans have separated themselves from, say, the, all of the other animals on the planet. Every animal on the planet eats its food in a raw, live state. So a whale eats a seal, a killer whale eats a seal, it consumes the, the seal, it gets the enzymes within that seal. Uh, a snake eats a chicken, a bear eats a salmon, a horse eats grass. It's always eating it in a live enzymatic ritual. Remember, enzymes are the difference between the living and the dead. Okay. okay? It, it. It's what makes us biological organisms. Okay. And so what's happened with society is starvation was the number one issue in humanity for as long as we've been. Great famine, starvation, no food, all this sort of stuff. Now, we've solved that problem most of the part in industrial worlds through the processing of foods, through the cooking of foods, the storage of foods, the preservation of foods. 
And that's a great thing. But the side effect of that, just like we've had side effects for developing birth control and things like that, is that we now are eating enzymatically deficient diets. Anytime you heat anything over 114 degrees, you kill all the enzymes. That's why we create pasteurization to kill the bad guys, kill the probiotics, to break down the enzymes. When they irradiate fruits and vegetables that come across the border, they do that so it sits on the sore shelf without rotting because the enzymes will naturally start breaking it down. If you're a uh, tiger going to knock down a zebra, you knock down that zebra, the tiger will eat the entrails first where the enzymes and probiotics are, and then it'll eat the rest of the carcass. So it's actually absorbing that first before it has the other types of food. Now, we stop doing that. We cook all our food. We preserve all our food. We process all our food. And there's advantages to that, okay? And I'm not here to say that, to, to discount that. But where are we getting our enzymes? We're not getting them in our diet. So what happens is our body has to manufacture enzymes on its own. And here's what it does. It converts smooth muscle, and striated muscle, that's our muscles, that's our internal organs, and it eats that away to create the enzymes to break down our food, and that's why humans have a pancreas that's four and a half times the size of any other species, because that's the, one of the release points for, for, for enzymes, enzymes. Oh. relative to body weight. And so what's interesting, and Dr. Howell pointed this all out, well, you can survive a generation, then the next generation comes, and the next generation comes, and by that third generation, you have an exponential rise in genetic illnesses, you have an exponential uh, deviation from normal sociological norms, and then you have an exponential rise in the inability to procreate. We have been using uh, fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides. And herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides interrupt enzymatic activity in living organisms. That's how it kills the bugs. We're getting this on our food. We're getting this on our diet. Our food items, even if we're eating in a raw state, are giving up their protein to convert to enzymes to grow the food on these mineral deficient sides. So even uh, wheat at the turn of the century in 1900 was 90% protein. This is from US Congress. And now today wheat is less than 7% protein. Oh, is this that is why so many people are, are sensitive to gluten? Correct, because now you've added yes, these agents on that. and you get the glyphosates that are going yeah. on there, which interrupt yeah. the enzymatic well, pathway. That. Yeah, yeah. Right? I didn't know that that, I, I knew that it had changed, but I didn't know it was because it was, it dropped that much as a protein. Yeah, that's how people lived on bread wow. 300 years ago. Dang. And that's why a lot of the ancient grains, the ones that haven't been altered, have higher protein cons, or that's why a lot of the hemp products, which weren't, were, were stripped out of monoculture, uh, because of the, the pushback against uh, marijuana products at the turn of the century, largely developed by the cotton industry. Hemp was the most prolific product in the world. It's highly enzymatic rich, great protein, great fats, all that sort of stuff. But it was kind of bastardized, you know, and pushed in the closet. And now it's making a resurgence in these areas. What a great time for that. So all that to say, um, the bottom line is that enzymatic deficiency is leading to some of these hormonal issues. It's leading to some of the digestive issues. It's creating a microbiome that doesn't support our health, doesn't help our neurochemicals, leads to depression, leads to binge eating, leads to hormonal disruption. And I've experienced all this. Yeah. As have so I would think I have too. Yeah. I yeah. would think most of my clients as well. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's not a question if you're going to experience, it just means when. And, that and to what degree. And to what degree. And that's going to be a range on a bell curve like anything else. And so for those ladies that are out there that's suffering and struggling and don't know what to do and they've tried everything, this is an area that, that I've literally dedicated my life to illuminate. Because once I solved my challenge and I started dealing with literally, it started as a trickle in my clinic in Vancouver. And then I started seeing this over and over. And then it, it kind of turned into a, like a wave. And then next thing you know, I went out to the world and started teaching this uh, for the last Which decade. Which is why you couldn't become a monk. You had to get this to Correct. the world. Correct. Yeah, this was my dharma. Full circle. Idea. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so now, so now I'm, a, I'm, I'm an enzyme and probiotic expert. And uh, I'm grateful for that. And uh, I'm grateful to be able to support people in that journey. Yeah, that's amazing. I love it. I think I just had um, Dr. Uh, Campbell... Uh, I'm going to forget her name. Campbell McBride, the one that created the GAPS protocol. Oh, wow. That's cool. Uh, she was amazing. And she was talking about how pesticides actually act like an antibiotic in our gut. Like it's the same thing. It just destroys our, our gut bacteria. And I was just like, oh my. And she was, she said, you know, by in the next 10 years or something, if we don't correct our digestive system, we're just going to have like 
they said she said fifty percent of all kids are going to have autism, ADD, ADHD, like, yep. and it's just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse because of gut health. Like, it really is the most important thing. And I've never heard anyone talk about the enzymes. Like, we hear a lot about probiotics, but not enzymes. So, tell me more about the enzymes. Where can then we can we get live enzymes from? Should we just be? I mean, we can't. Is it just raw vegetables and stuff like that that we're getting it from? Well, here's the challenge. So nature is incredibly efficient. Yes. And so it only produces the amount of enzymes that will break down that particular orgasm. So or orgasm, like organism. <laughs> All right. And so yeah. that organism, uh, so for example, whatever president is, if let's say you kill an animal, um, what'll happen is there's a release of a chemical called cathospin is the enzyme, which will start breaking down that tissue at that point it becomes activated as soon as, and, and the same thing with plants. There's a wide variety of them. Um, so when you get those plants, you'll break it down. You, you'll have enough enzymes to maybe break down that food if it's in a raw state, but you won't be able to build up what Howell referred to as your enzymatic bank account. So he said the average 40 year old has less than 30% of the enzymes they had when they were a kid. Now enzymes, again, 25,000 pathways, everything from thinking to blinking. Now, I discovered on this, I stumbled upon something that was through my own kind of radical experimentation. And that is I do fasting. I was doing fasting 20 years ago. And intermittent fasting has become a big trend now. Yeah. And it's, in, it's pervasive in all cultures as a healing modality. And I said, okay, well, that's great. How does it heal? What is the mechanism? And when you stop eating food, you stop requiring your body to manufacture enzymes to break down the food. And so let's say your, your enzymatic bank account, for a better, lack of a better word, you have 100 units of digestive power. Because if you don't have enzymes, you don't get your food. Okay, You can't absorb it. It just sits in your gut. Well, let's say normally it's taking you 80% of your enzymes just to break down your food. That's why food consumption is so metabolically inefficient in a lot of ways. Mm. Okay? And so... Now you only have 20% of your enzymes to, to fix your brain and to fix your organs and make your skin nice and all that stuff. When you fast, now you're putting less stress on the digestive system. The body starts to repair literally in sequence the, the most essential components of the body down to the least essential points. So fasting has been a great way and animals do it. If an animal gets sick, it doesn't want to eat because it, under, it intrinsically understands that these enzymes are now not going to be used for digestion. It's going to use to heal the body. And so I postulate it by doing fasting. I was like, well, what would happen if I started putting hundreds of enzymes into my body while I was fasting? Would I be able to build up this theoretical enzymatic bank account? And the answer is an astounding yes, because wow. number one, I consumed, and I don't recommend this to do, I consumed <laughs> a thousand capsules of enzymes, proteolytic enzymes, uh, a day. What? Yeah. Because there's a principle in orthomolecular nutrition and orthomolecular nutrition was developed by Abram Hoffer, uh, Dr. David Hawkins and Dr. Linus Pauling. Very, that was the first people to kind of illustrate how you could treat, um, a variety of diseases with nutrition. And they focused particularly on psychiatry and uh, which was fascinating. It was radically attacked at the time, but later on it became uh, very much accepted. Now, what's interesting about that is Linus Pauling developed the theory of, I call it the bucket theory, which is that you would take super physiological dosage of vitamin C until you get the runs. When you hit uh, what's what they call tolerance, that you can't absorb any more of that product. People do it with magnesium, people do it with vitamin C. Your body will instantly get the runs and release the, re release the excess. Well, I said, well, let's find out what it's going to take for enzymes, will it show up in my stool? Guess what? It didn't show up in my stool and I didn't get the runs. My body simply absorbed every amount of enzymes. Now, I haven't gone over a thousand caps before that. I figured that was enough. It felt great. I had a lot of energy. But I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then I started using it with my clients. I saw people, and this is anecdotal, I'm not making any claims here, but I saw people that had like thick scars on their shoulders. I had one friend that had a thick scar from a necrosis injury from a, a, a spider bite that was about a half inch thick. Over the course of nine months went completely flat and all discoloration it became exactly the same skin tone as you, you could only just see in a slight outline. I seen people overcome horrific uh, skin conditions. I seen um, 
a high percentage of people that suffered from clinical depression. And I believe that's because they couldn't break down, convert the protein that they were eating into the amino acids, which would convert to the polypeptide trains that kept their neurochemistry going. So what you'll see is a lot of women, for example, who are not breaking down the protein they're eating because enzymatic pathway for protease drops off earlier than other enzymes. And what happens is now they start feeling depressed. And because they're in the depressed, they start eating foods that they shouldn't eat to kind of get those sugar highs or the caffeine highs or the chemical highs, which are excitotoxins, which are oftentimes added to the food to stimulate the brain so that you consume more of it. You can check out uh, Ed, uh, uh, Sloshers, Edward, Slo Edward Slosher, I think it was Ed Slosher's uh, Fast Food Nation, uh, oh, yeah. where he talks about the whole science of that and how to get yeah. people to consume more of the product. And now then you're getting a cycle of weight gain and obesity and hormonal disruption. So it all starts in digestion, triggered to cascade effects. And now the bad guys are feeding on the undigested protein and they're putting toxins in the body, which is further exasperating, you know, the, the neurological conditions or depressive states. And then people start trying to eat themselves out of a poor mental state, which contributes to a poor how I look or how I feel or who I am as a woman or as a man even. And then it becomes this. And I see this literally, I see it so pervasive in our society because yes. I, I went through that. I yeah. went through that. I get it. I just happened to go through it really early. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So where do we get the enzymes from? Are we having to, does every one of us have to supplement? Do you think? I, I, I frankly believe so. Yeah, um, I do too. I, I, I think in today's world, realistically, I mean, let's face this. Let's just look at the numbers. Yeah. Uh, and most of this data comes out of the United States. 12% of the hospital visits, emergency hospital visits are related to gastrointestinal conditions. That's more than one in 10 people going in an ambulance because the conditions have gotten just so bad they need to be put in an emergency room and it's going up, right? 95 million Americans, a third of the population are suffering from a digestive condition on any given day. Mm -hmm. And the numbers are going up. Now, we, we can talk about all the bad food and everything. Bad food just tastes good. That's why people eat it. It's, it's, it's engineered and designed to make you love it, to make you consume more of it. And it also can feed the, the bad actors, and we'll talk about that, the bad probiotics, because there's a relationship between three components. Enzymes, hydrochloric acid, and probiotics are the three nutritional supplements that deal with digestion in particular. If you want, I can break down the mechanics real short so that your listeners can hear how that works and then we can kind yeah. of get to the final stage which is probiotics. So digestion begins in your mouth, you chew up your food, it goes down the esophagus and into the upper cardiac portion of the stomach. You have about 30 to 60 minutes before hydrochloric acid, that it's the, acid, the stomach acid that your body uses to help break down the food and help to disinfect and and, and fight off viruses and bacteria and, and all kinds of pathogens. What happens when uh, hydrochloric acid starts to come into the body, it changes the pH of that. Now, normally our enzymes are supposed to be breaking that down because you're supposed to eat enzymes with your food, but your food's cooked, so you didn't get the enzymes. So now it's not even broken down the way it needs, the hydrochloric acid comes in. There's a little flap at the top of your stomach it's called the, or the bottom of the esophagus, whatever you want to call it. It's called the, the lower esophageal sphincter. And that closes when there's sufficient amount of hydrochloric acid inside the body. Okay, it's like that's a trigger that closes it down. Well, guess what? If you're not producing enough hydrochloric acid, most people aren't by the time they're 40, that flap stays open. Now that leads to acid reflux and heartburn. Okay, but what's on top of that now you, have an, you don't go through the full digestion of that product. You don't have the enzymes. You don't have enough hydrochloric acid. Now bad pathogens, bacteria can get through there. Um, uh, bacteria that's not good for you. And you can get parasites that can go through there. You can get all these sorts of elements that aren't supposed to be in because your digestion is 80% of your immune system. 
as it leaves the lower intestine after it's been kind of churning around and stuff like that. And you can tell if this isn't working. Number one, you get acid reflux or you get burps or gas or heartburn. Second two, if the food is sitting in your stomach and feel bloated, you, I, I, I bet you almost every woman on this podcast can tell you, if I go and have this type of food, I feel bloated. Well, they're yeah. right. And their husband's telling them, you're crazy. No, you're, no, you're not. You're absolutely tuned into what's happening. You're bloated because you haven't broken down the food. You have undigested proteins in, that, in your stomach or undigested food particles of some sort. You haven't had enough hydrochloric acid to get through. If you didn't get heartburn or the burps or gas, then now you're feeling bloated. And what's happening in there at that time, you're getting more bloated because the, the undigested proteins are feeding the bad bacteria the bad guys, and it's 10% good, 10% bad, 80% opportunist. So the bad guys are now eating this protein. You're feeding the bad guys. They're literally producing waste products like Indol and Skatol and all these neurotoxins that's making you depressed and will make you crave the food that you're not supposed to eat. So you go, I can't control myself. I'm secretly breaking my diet. Why is it? Because you're not running your brain anymore. The bugs are running your brain. And so now you have a dysbiosis inside the stomach that's ripe for having things like uh, candida, right? Candida overgrowth, these type of things, which so many women suffer in silence from, which is a horrific condition. Uh, which you know they can't eat wheat, they can't eat sugar, they can't drink wine, they can't have, they can't live. Yeah. Because of these conditions, it can be painful, it can be embarrassing, it can be a very big health issue. And, you know, and then what do they do? They go to the doctor, and the doctor gives them a prescription for antibiotics, <laughs> which now drops a bomb and wipes out whatever good guys you have left along with the bad guys, and, then, and you set yourself up for a further cycle. So uh, same thing as you're taking acid reflux medication. Well, the proton pumps that are prescribed today by pharmaceutical doctors they're only designed for you to be on them for four to six weeks and you're supposed to get off them. And the reason that you needed them is because most people didn't have enough hydrochloric acid and most people didn't break down their food because the enzyme. So it becomes this cascading effect that we've been doing this dance for a couple of generations. And what do we have? Massive rise in obesity. We have massive rise in emergency vision. We have unchecked hormonal imbalances that are compromising relationships and people's self-worth and their overall health. We're having massive cases of constipation because now you're getting the peristaltic contraction. You've disrupted that. You're not able to go to the bathroom anymore. And this is a big issue for women because they're much more sensitive about these things. Mm -hmm. And they start holding it in as they're teenagers and start developing psychology or what I would call limiting psychology around that process. And, it, and it, so you just, you just keep stacking one of these. And, it, and by the time you hit 40 years old or 45 years old, the system's blown. But I'm here to say you can change it, mm -hmm. right? I'm not, I'm not trying to sit there and say this, this is the end, this is not going to work. <laughs> but rebuilding yourself and coming back from that place requires a long-term game plan. It's not a diet. It's not an exercise routine. Although those may be components of it, sometimes you have to start eating more in order to, to, to neutrify, what I call neutrify yourself, to start supporting your system to get some of these hormone cascades back online, get your brain back into that state. Allow yourself to manufacture your natural hormonal axis and to come out of whatever has been suppressing that. Uh, and then as your metabolism starts to kick up and your thyroid kicks in and your happy hormones start going off in your brain, now you can systematically start maybe getting to the gym more, building up your exercise cycle. And this is going to take a lot of people anywhere from you know, 12 to 24 months if they're in a very compromised state. And I would say that probably... 50% of women are in a very compromised state and nobody's talking about this. Nobody's providing oh, this information. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and I'm here to spread the message to let people know there is help. There is hope. You do need the guidance of a real professional. If you're really going to knock this out because there's a lot of other, I don't want to say this is the be all the end all the only thing. But what I can say is Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine outlined 2500 years ago that all disease begins in the gut. I know. How he knew that, I don't know. Yeah, I know. That's, a, that's what that, what that doctor, uh, Natasha, uh, told me too. She, was, she said the exact same quote. And I'm like, that is amazing. 2,500 years ago. He knew somehow. It took us this long to try and figure it out again. But it blows and, my you, mind. Yeah. And you know what? Wait, I just find that so many women, I've been in this industry for almost 20 years now. And there's so 
I would say 90% of my clientele has digestive issues and 90% of them don't get how much it affects their weight. And I love how you just explained how it's not even, it, it can, yes, it can affect your weight, but a lot of it has to do with what it's doing to our brain mm -hmm. and how it's making us crave the foods we, we shouldn't be eating. Like that's such a aha moment, I think, for a lot of people listening. Well, we're really starting to, we're into what I call is the golden age, the beginning of the golden age of understanding digestion and, and, and the a focus and influence of a lot of scientists. And I'll, he's one of them I like to listen to is Dr. Rhonda Patrick, I think. Yes, she's a, I like she's her. A, she's a great voice, especially. She's a very, very bright woman. Yes. And she understands the science really well. And she's, she's, she's very unbiased in her presentation of information and she's a radical experimenter and she's a mom and she's a re like, she's like, you know, pretty incredible lady. I think. Um, and, and the fact that we have podcasts such as this that are getting the messages outside the traditional channels, because these aren't areas that your GP has been d developed or your even your specialists in those fields, the gastrointestinal uh, specialist and, and neurochemical specialist and psychologist and all these things that people are trained to go to. None of them, have what I would call even amateurish backgrounds in the relation of nutrition and how it affects yeah. our bodies. And that's an expanding field right now. Most naturopathic doctors are getting to it. There's experts in nutrition around this. There's experts in hormone health. So we're, we're seeing a trend go the other way. And I don't see these two components being at opposites. I think that our medical system is really good for short care. I think the alternative health as it's quote unquote called, which is actually the more long-term program. So, you know, uh, with NDs and specialists in, in, in exercise and nutrition and these type of things are the people who are leading that way. So I always recommend getting what I call a Jedi council. And that is making sure that you have the specialists in each of your areas in order to access it. And unfortunate right now that that is for a lot of people uh, expensive. Uh, but if I look at, hey, you're driving around in a $50,000 car. I know. Right? Yeah. Why would you spend $50,000 on the car that you can replace when you have literally a priceless body, a priceless life? Your life is price. What price would you put on your life or what price would you put on your kid's life? Nothing. So take a hard look at that brand new shiny car that makes the neighbors look good or that brand new pair of shoes that you saw on the, on the TV show that you just got to have that cost you 500 bucks and say, you know what? I'm going to get that stuff at the second hand store, save myself some money. And I'm going to retake those funds and put it back into my health and back into my body and back into some expertise. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I always tell people, if somebody told you, you could buy a house for whatever, $400, would you do it? Yes, they'd find the money. They wouldn't be like, oh, no, I don't have the 400. You would find it. And your health should be considered something that is top priority. And for some reason, it's not <laughs> for most people. Well, you know, and I, I would say, had I not had the experiences that I had with my sister dying at an early age and my career and, and you know, the, six, the pinnacle of success from what I call cosmetic ideals, because bodybuilding is 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 the male version in a lot of ways, not just discount female bodies, but it's the male version of being a supermodel, right? It's yeah, kind of- totally. You know, yes. I'm the yes. ultra E-man musculature, yeah. right? Uh, and, 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 and of those two things, if those two things hadn't happened, I wouldn't be here today talking about what happened. If I hadn't had those challenges, if I hadn't made the mistake of looking at cosmetic ideal or performance-based nutrition versus health-based, because fitness and health are not the same thing. Fitness is a component of health. It's not the total picture. And I think a lot of people make that mistake. Mm -hmm. Same thing as looking beautiful isn't the same as actually being healthy. Yeah. And we'll see so many people that we admire on the covers of magazines and on those posts actually are compromising their health to look that way. And you don't know all the train wrecks. And I've dealt with the train wrecks. I've dealt same. with the, the, the people afterwards. And you can relate to this. Totally. You know, two years ago, they were on the cover of every magazine. And now they're 40 pounds overweight in a state of depression and, you know, can't get out of bed in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Or the moms that decide they're going to work out like crazy and calorie restrict. And they've got, you know... A million pictures on Instagram and other social media sites to say, look at me, look at my abs. 
And then, you know, I see them a year later and they tell me how sick they are. They have no period. They're depressed. They've got anxiety. And it's because they just, they, your body isn't naturally supposed to go down the road. <laughs> like it just doesn't. And it tells you that. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so, unfortunately, just a, one last piece. Yeah. The unfortunate aspect is this has had a trickle down effect and a lot of young girls, which generally should have a higher percentage of body fat, because that's really when you're in your hormonal optimal level to have children, they are entering into these, what I call cosmetically driven social media pressures to look a certain way. And they're playing with altering their body chemistry and their hormone chemistry and their natural body fat levels radically through restrictive diets, um, not well thought out training programs, and uh, no, no concept or idea about the intestine tract. And when you're young, you just think you're going to live forever, you're going to look good forever, and everything's going to keep going on. You don't have that insight. You don't have that foresight of what it's going to be when you're 30 and 35 and 45. And uh, I was one of those people that made that mistake. And I'm here to send out a warning. If you have some younger girls or people are listening, you have daughters, they need to understand, they need to learn this, they need to be able to manage the pressures that are on them today from social media and that comparison thing that sets so many people up for failure. Yeah, I agree. Thanks for saying that. I have a daughter, so I'm always very careful about that kind of stuff. So before everyone runs out and buys enzymes and probiotics, <laughs> they're not all made equally. So I would like you just to kind of tell us a bit about what you, what your guys' product is all about and how does it differ from what you would go pick up at your local health food store? Well, thanks so much. I appreciate that. So um, when it comes down to enzymes, there's a variety of different things. There's, uh, there's, there's, plant-based enzymes, there's animal-based enzymes, there's systemic enzymes, there's mm. digestive enzymes, there's all these different things. And when you walk into a store and you say, well, I need some digestive enzymes, you're going to see bottles on the shelf for like 10 bucks, and you're going to see bottles on the shelf for 110 bucks. And the, the, the consumer doesn't know how to determine the difference. So let me give you a couple things that you want to look for when you're deciding to have an enzyme overall. Whether you get our products or not, that's fine. I just want people to go in there and have the knowledge. Awesome. Number one, uh, I think one of the biggest challenges that people have is um, protein, protein digestion. So you're going to want to have uh, a proteolytic enzyme. Proteolytic is a fancy name for it breaks down protein uh, that has at least, at the very least, 50,000 what's called HUTs, huts per serving. Ideally, you'd want 75 or even if you can get enough, if you can get 100,000, that's like the golden zone because you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck. Okay, so you, you might pay a lot more for that. Proteolytic enzymes, by the way, are the most expensive enzymes out there, of course, right? Because protease, uh, the other thing is when you're looking at protease, make sure it has protease 3.0, protease 4.5, and protease 6.0. And what those relate to is the pH levels that those particular enzymes worked in. Remember we talked about digestion as hydrochloric acid comes in. Certain protein amino acids will get cleaved at different pH levels. And so and some enzymes become activated and some become deactivated as the pH range changes. Okay. Second thing, make sure it has a good serving of, 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 of amylase and lipase. And that's going to vary a lot, but you don't have to worry about too much, but just make sure it has all of those things. The proteolytic one is the, I think the most important. Second thing, um, you're going to be given a choice between animal-based enzymes and plant-based enzymes. Well, there are a few specific functions for animal-based enzymes. Go with plant-based. And the reason why you go with plant-based, because they work in a pH range ranging from approximately 2 all the way up to 12. No matter what your natural pH or what foods that you're going to, they're just going to work in a variety of conditions, both. Uh, and, and that's really important. Okay. Next thing. When you're looking at the capsule, uh, my suggestion is to get a plant-based capsule, especially if you're a vegetarian or more plant strong. Uh, you can get a cellulose-based capsule. So you're not using the gelatin capsules, which come from, you know, you know, toes and noses, as I call it, you know, in skin, the gelatin components of, of beef or pigs or things like that. So use plant-based ones. Look, the, the fourth thing that you're going to look for is you're going to look for um, things like magnesium stearate or silicon dioxide or any of those unpronounceable words inside it, which are generally preservatives. 
if someone is putting those type of preservatives inside your enzymatic pro process, they have no business of selling you an enzyme. They do it to keep it as stable, they keep it preserved, or they use it as filler. The bottom line is they don't have your best interest in, they're making their product on the bottom line. And the chances are that the enzymes that they're using in it are, are really what I call a strong enzyme. Ideally, you would like a cultured enzyme. So if you look at, uh, say, uh, a cultured enzyme is anywhere between 100 and 1,000 times more powerful than a food enzyme. So a lot of people say, well, I get bromelain or papayan out of my pineapples or whatever. Like, you know, and, and, and people go, well, that's enough. Well, think about this. Something that's going to be 100 to 1,000 times more powerful by taking a cultured enzyme. And a cultured enzyme is just an enzyme that's been grown on a specific medium over a period of time. There's specialized nutrients on it. The extraction process is using is not using a chemical agent that's going to disrupt it so that you get just pure super potent enzymes out of it. And that's going to give you a lot more effect. And so a lot of people that have experimented with digestive enzymes and said, well, I tried those and didn't work. And the reality is, is I would say that nine out of 10 times the products that are on your store shelf are not strong enough. There's not sufficient amount of them or they're not effective in the pH ranges of your dietary stuff. In other words, so they're, so they're not going to work. So whether you've paid five bucks or 50 bucks for them, you've wasted all your money because there's nothing more expensive than a product that doesn't work. And so when I started fixing my own digestion, I was working with Dr. O'Brien way back. This is, we're going back now to uh, 2004. And he had developed his products really for, what he, he advocated a completely raw food diet, which was a low protein diet. And I went on that diet. I went on, and there was benefits to it and there was liabilities to it. But the long story short was, is they hadn't spent a lot of money on proteolytic enzymes in those. They, they, were, they had low dosage of protein, high amounts of amylase and, and moderate amounts of lipase. And although that was good for me, I, it didn't resonate for me as an athlete or for me that someone was working out or for people who were suffering from depression states and things like that. And so I knew that getting proteolytic enzymes was the key component to, in order to make this what I call a product for the masses, something that people could take, something that athletes could take, something that, uh, you know, 55 year old women could take. I wanted a lot of protease and no one was out there because it was so expensive. So we built one. We built a cultured enzyme. There is no fillers, no additives, no chemicals, plant-based enzymes, cultured enzymes. We held no holds barred because I wanted something for me. And the good news was, is that fueled me later on. This is the long story short. Uh, four years of experimenting and thousands of clients that I tested on. I tested on over 15,000 clients over the course of four years. Uh, we had an online site that had all these people coming in. And I actually made a comeback because I had retired in 03. I made a comeback to the world championships, won my national titles again, went to the world championship, event, felt great the whole time, didn't have the weight gain, didn't have the experience, only ate 85 grams of protein today all plant-based. Wow. Uh, I was on a completely raw food diet as a, as a bodybuilding champion. And I was able to do it because of the proteolytic enzymes that I was using and I'd cultivated and developed myself. And since that time, we've gone through three renditions. We've added another chemical to it, uh, which is an extraction. It's not a chemical. It's an extraction from the astrologous root, which is used in Chinese medicine. And that increases the potency of our enzymes by 30 to 40 percent Wow! over that we have 17 different enzymes inside of it we've got lactase invertase galactase i mean every kind of enzyme that you could imagine that would break down virtually the food for any type of diet because i'm a vegetarian my business partner is a keto guy we needed a product that would deal with both of them we're at the far ends of the spectrum yeah and uh, it's been really exciting, and, and I, I just feel grateful every day that we're able to do that. So um, we're our premium price products. Uh, I think we'll put a code in here where people can get access to them for free, uh, for not for free, but with a deep discount. But here's the best part. Um, we're a digital-based company. We sell direct to the consumer. Okay. And what we do is we have a 365-day guarantee on all our products. To try it, if it doesn't work, you send it back. We give you your money back. Second thing is we have your fix your digestion guarantee. If you buy a product from us and for whatever reason it doesn't fix whatever you're working at, call our company, reach out by email, by, te by text, by chat, or call the lines. I have a whole team of girls that I work with that I've trained personally that field all these questions. 
and we'll respond back to what you're, can, what, you, what you're working on and we'll send you a free bottle of whatever product we think will work. And if that doesn't fix it, we'll still give you your money back. And wow. so you go, well, how are you able to do this? Because we're really good at fixing digestion. We've been fixing yeah. digestion since 2004. And then on top of that, I would say you look at your probiotics and we've, we've got a, a patented probiotic that really just is, it's just the most amazing probiotic on the planet. And that's to recondition your body uh, as natural microbiome. We call it the Navy SEALs of probiotics. It's patented, it's antiviral, antiretroviral, protolytic, digest virtually anything. Is it soil based or dairy based? Uh, so if this is, this is uh, not soil based. And I won't say that it's dairy-based either. This is a whole other yeah. realm. Yeah. Um, and we've recently uh, just upgraded it. We fed it a new medium. We've had a breakthrough. So we thought, well, you know, if you have athletes and you feed them better food, they perform better. If you have people and you feed them better food, what if we, what if we, fed, what if we fed the probiotics? We tried a bunch of different mediums to see what would be the superfood for these bacteria cultures. And after a bunch of tests, we found out the result. We're still testing. We never stopped it. We were always looking to improve. Awesome. And we were able to do that. But even the, without that, the original version had all those patented claims. And it's maintainable in the gastrointestinal tract, which is huge. Huge. Yeah. Most probiotics Most aren't. aren't. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's proven in the patent. So I always say, no patent, no proof. We have a patent. We have proof. That's why we can stand behind it. And that's why we can offer these ridiculous guarantees that no one else is doing. Yeah. And so, I'm sold, Wade. Yeah. And we've got a special <laughs> gift for everybody on here. If Great. they go to bioptimizers.com slash the other side, they're going to get a deep discount on the products that they want to try. And they're getting all the guarantees. Plus, I'm going to throw in the 84 days. So I've created a 12-week course called the Awesome Health Course. Yep. Where I outline uh, literally, in, it's in like 5 to 15-minute videos you can watch on your iPhone that goes through what I call the, the seven pillars of awesome health, air, water, exercise, sunlight, optimizers, mental beliefs and attitude, education, testing, coaching. I didn't invent all the information. I just compiled it. I gave you the research, the experts, the people that I've used, that I've used with my clients. I've got a program that's 15 minutes a day that people can integrate the whole thing. They can skip around. They can learn more about enzymes, more about products. They can go on those videos. I talk about a lot of things. I refer to a lot of people and I'm going to give that away to everybody listening to that. And then you just got to go to bioptimizers.com slash the other side. We will yes. put it in the show notes. So you get that. You just Everyone's get going, sold. I'm going. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I want to help. I want to help some ladies that you're talking to. I know yeah. we can make a difference. I want to hear your stories. I've got so many in my, my life and I'm just, I just feel so grateful. And I know there's someone out there suffering listening to this today that we yeah. can make a difference with. Yeah, same. I, I feel the same. I'm like, so many people are going to be like, I'm going to try this. And I want to know how it works too. Let us know if you try them out and what they've done for you. And I'm going to, you can email me and I'll you pass it on to Wade because there's always, it's always good to have the testimonials. Yeah, it's, it's, I love I it. I mean, every week in our company, we have a team meeting Monday morning and we read the testimonials oh, great. Uh, of people suffering from conditions for 20, 30, 40 years. And all of a sudden they can go to the bathroom at will anymore. You know, I mean, just, just, it seems so simple, but it's so profound. And I, and I, 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 I just I'm so thankful. I get to experience that on a daily basis. Yeah. And I think between this podcast and that one with uh, the Dr. Campbell McBride, listen to them both. If you haven't listened to the other one, because you'll get scared and you're going to want to fix your gut. If, if Wade's yeah. message isn't resonating enough with you, go listen to hers. And yeah. between the two of them, you're going to want to fix your gut for all reasons, not just weight loss. So, well, thank you, Wade. I appreciate, I appreciate the gift that you've given my listeners and I appreciate all of your amazing knowledge here on the podcast today. So thank you. Thanks so much. It's been a real pleasure and uh, I look forward to getting you on the awesome health podcast as well. Yeah, I can't wait.